everybody, they're really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuuki Zuisoroku, the fan disc material added to the PS3 version of Hakuuki Stories of the Shinsengumi. And today we have our last little extra with Hijikata, Memories of Love Part 8. Let's see what our premise is for this one. June 1870. With the war at an end, Hijikata and the protagonist return to the cherry trees to watch the blossoms fall and think back on times past. Okay, so be a good, nice one with some kisses, please. Yes, let's begin. Ah, yes, the happy ending. You cry so easily. I feel bad if I left you behind. That's right. Stop trying to do it. The long winter was over at last, and spring had come. We had returned to the place where the cherry blossoms danced in the air, with the war a little more than a memory. Every time he smiled, I felt my heart swell with love. With each word he spoke, I could feel his affection for me. The longer we were together, the deeper our happiness grew, seeping into our bones and lighting up our faces. He was mine, and I was his. Our days together were everything I dreamt of. Let's hear more about it! Hooray! The final battle had come and gone. By the time Hijikata's wounds had healed, there was no more reason to fight. The loyalist leaders at Koryokoku surrendered. They had still been ready and willing to resist, but... It became clear that victory was impossible, and a try would doom their men to meaningless death. As for Hijikata, in the chaos of battle, he had been mistakenly reported dead. <laughs> Just before the surrender, so that's how they got around the history with it to give us a good ending. Otori paid me a visit and told me to take Hijikata a message. We have already held a funeral for him, so please, both of you, stay dead. <laughs> Gladly! Having faked our deaths, we can live happily ever after. Hijikata's wounds had been severe, and it was some time before he even regained consciousness. By the time he did, everything was over. The men commanding Goryokoku had been made to take responsibility for the war and imprisoned. Hijikata cursed himself for being absent, and for not standing beside the men who had gone to prison. But, in time, he made peace with the fact that it seemed the wider world no longer had a place for him. His fury ability to heal had disappeared once he recovered. June, 1870 Now we live a quiet life together in Hakodate. Fury Blood had eaten away at his life, although we didn't know how much. There was a chance that suddenly, without warning, it would catch up to him. But that was a worry for another day. This year's cherry blossoms were prettier than ever. There was happiness waiting beyond war. He and I are living proof. A year has passed since the war, and every day still feels like a blessing. A whole year of happiness together! Memories of Love, Part 8 June, 1870 Hijikata reached out to gently wipe away tears rolling down my cheeks. I blushed and looked away. Sorry. I feel like I'm just crying all the time. Am I pregnant? Well, I'm not mad about it or anything. Cry all you want. If you need a shoulder to cry on, you know I'm always here for you. I, I'm okay now. It's nice of you to put up with me, but... Really, I just need to pull myself together. I don't want to be a problem. His lips curled into a private smile. You're not a problem. In fact, you're pretty when you cry. Hard for me to look away. Oh, Look at him. I mean, I, I like him much, much better with long hair, but he looks pretty cool with the short hair and his yukata. You... Just hearing his voice made my heart beat faster, even now. Nice weather today. Great for watching this. Yeah. Laid out in front of us were the cherry trees of Goryokoku, heavy with flowers. Just standing there looking at them was enough to make me want to cry all over again. <laughs> Oh man, Jesus, why are you so emotional? Seriously, are you pregnant? The war lasted for so long and created so many sad memories. Maybe we should have bought something, like flowers or... I don't know. Maybe, but we've got plenty of sake, and knowing them, that's probably all they'd want anyway. And look around, flowers everywhere. I think this is good enough for them. Oh, are we drinking to the fallen? Yeah, you're right. This is a memorial. Don't get all sappy on us now. 
The boys wouldn't want that. I nodded. That's why I'm crying. Okay, it all makes sense now. Sorry. A year had passed since the war had ended, and for the first time we'd come back to Goryokoku. To see the cherry blossoms, and to visit all the friends who were no longer with us. Yeah, they all loved the season, didn't they? I think they'd be pretty happy. Mm-hmm. Back at Chie Hall, we'd have a party every time the tree started to blossom. Didn't really have the time after we came to Kyoto. So, this is a little overdue, but I don't think they'll mind. It was difficult to learn what had happened to our friends without revealing ourselves, and we couldn't return to Edo either. Please, I don't want to hear all the deaths again. <laughs> we didn't know what our absent friends were doing, but... Somewhere, they were probably watching the blossoms fall, just like we were. The ones that survived. I think this is the most beautiful I've ever seen them. Hijikata nodded. If you say so. Can't say I'm real perceptive when it comes to sentimental stuff. I think you've gotten a little better about it. R really? I'd expected some kind of resistance, and I paused. But he only looked at me and smiled. Never met anyone who loves cherry blossoms like you do. I figure I can trust your judgment here. <sighs> I blushed. The reason I love them so much is because they remind me of you. I, um, how was I supposed to say it? It makes me really happy when you say that cherry blossoms really suit me. I... I feel like you're saying that we look good together. Damn, Chizuru. Oh, you made him blush. I was starting to think you were never going to figure it out. <laughs> what? Of course you look best next to me. Y you Why couldn't you just say it? I could feel the heat rising from my cheeks. He sighed and rolled his eyes. What am I going to do with you? I know you can tell me off if you want to, but then you do this and it looks like a stiff breeze would knock you on your ass. S sorry I'll be more careful, I guess? I wasn't entirely sure how else to respond. Is there anything else that's bothering you? You can tell me. I'll do my best to get better. Huh. Alright. You never speak up. If you have something to say about me, just spit it out. Make love to me, here amongst the cherry blossoms. W what You heard me. I never know what you're thinking. We're together now. You don't need to hide anything from me. I... I... What? Apparently, there was a lot on his mind. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. Maybe hide isn't the best word, then. You just keep things to yourself. Take me, for example. When I think you're looking good, I make sure to tell you right away. No, you don't. You liar. Oh. He did have a point. He often told me how nice I looked. And all he did was blush, never reciprocate. So he wants to be complimented some? <laughs> Are you fishing for compliments, Hijikata? I guess he's changed if he's complimenting me more nowadays. Was he pouting? Look, it's not that I think you don't like me. I know you do, but it's nice to hear it sometimes. Oh my god, that's usually the woman saying that. <sighs> oh, cheese utter, you've been so neglectful. It was certainly a fair point. Since he brought it up, I decided it was as good a time as any to tell him what I thought. He was... He's amazing and attractive, but I have to say attractive. I... I think you're really attractive. Oh, well, it's just my face. Oh, he's not blushing for that one. It wasn't good enough. <sighs> He'd probably been complimented on his looks many times before. Why couldn't I communicate what I really felt? Uh, um... Something wrong? You look weird. I could tell he was needling me, just to see what my reaction would be. Uh, of course I like how you look, okay? You're really good looking, and, um, sometimes I still can't believe it. But, it wasn't easy to say, but I pushed ahead. But, what I really love about you is your conviction, and your dedication, and the way you talk, and how kind you are, and how you tuck your hair behind your ear. I love everything about you. Anyone could see that he was an attractive man, but what truly made him incredible was behind that, and it shone out from him like the sun. Hijikata looked at me for a moment, then blushed and turned away. There we go, there's the blush. Well, um, thanks. Nobody's ever, uh, said anything like that to me. Oh, well, um, way to make things awkward, guys. I thought I'd feel relieved, but instead I felt more nervous and embarrassed than before. Look, 
I want to make sure how you feel. I want to make sure you know I feel the same way about you. That expression you have when you've made up your mind is so brave and determined that I can't look away. Normally, everything Hijikata said was delivered in the same gruff, no-nonsense way, but... Now he was blushing awkwardly and looking away. I would never tell him, but seeing him like that made me happy. What I'm saying is, I love who you are, Chizuru. Uh, oh! My cheeks still felt hot, but a smile had stretched across my face. <sighs> a cool breeze caressed us, and we turned to look up at the trees in full bloom. For a long moment, neither of us spoke. When Hijikata broke the silence, his voice was hesitant. If it's okay with you, how'd you like to stay here until the sun goes down? I think it's going to look incredible in the moonlight. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I'd like to see that. Especially together with you. I nodded, but suddenly his face turned serious. What? You're like the spring moon. Huh? Sometimes in the spring, the nights get especially dark, not enough starlight to see the ground in front of you. Then the moon comes out and fills the sky with this beautiful, soft golden light. He gazed off into the distance, his voice barely above a whisper. It hangs there silently, showing us all where we're going. There's something almost magical about it. Just stopping for a moment to look up at the moon can make you feel completely at peace. How can this man write bad poetry? You like the spring moon? Yeah. Ever since I was a kid, I thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world. The, the most? My heart started to beat faster. Are you saying that I can shine the same way? Did I shine brighter than anything else in his world? Was I really that beautiful to him? You wanted to wait here until the moon came out. Was that because of how beautiful the moon and cherry blossoms are together? You don't know how happy that makes me. I think I'm gonna cry. Again. <laughs> picture, picture! He said nothing, just smiled and gently drew me close. His fingers softly brushed the tears from my cheeks for the second time that day. In the depths of his eyes, I could see happiness, earnest concern, and the fire of love. Oh, so pretty! I want to know him, every part of him. I really like it when they give us the pictures where Chizuru gets to look feminine, too. We spend every day together, but it's nothing close to enough. Even his gaze carried unspoken multitudes of emotion. What else could his words promise? I thought the spring moon wasn't something I could ever have, no matter how much I wanted it. But now I have her right here. He was so close that I could feel his breath on my lips. I'm yours. I'll always be with you. Always. I felt selfish, but... No matter how wonderful our life was together, I lived in fear of someday saying goodbye. Who wouldn't? I wanted more time with him. Ah. If only our happiness could last forever. The space between us disappeared, and our lips met. Our kiss became my whole world. We melted into one another, his longing washing over me in waves. In some deep secret corner of my soul, I cried, because I knew that while my love for him would never end, one day he would be gone. As I look back, there's no doubt in my mind that our first encounter was no coincidence. It was a long journey, but it had brought us here, to have a love that surpassed everything. One day we will be gone, and the world will move on without us. But I hope that in that new world, the moon will still shine down on the cherry blossoms as lovers watch and sigh. Surrounded by the new life of spring, I made a silent prayer that we would always be together. A long life with him was my only wish. Hmm. Oh, and now we get... Well, sorry, but I'm going to have to mute the music so I don't get a copyright strike. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this will be his ending credits. No, I'm being lazy, but I don't want to put up a separate video for the ending credits. So I'm just going to go ahead and let them play here without the music. So sorry. But buy the game, it's really not very expensive. That'll give you a good reason. Buy the game so you can listen to the music and hear the original voices. Yeah, so I decided, for the rest of the guys, I'm going to play them in the order that I played them originally for the Demon of the Fleeting Blossom series. So I'm going to do Harada next. 
because I really want the sappy scenes, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get them out of him. Well, that's it for Hijikata Zuisoroku material. I hope you'll join me for the next episode when I start up Harada Sonosuke's materials. Ah, I received Hijikata's letter in the gallery section. Let's go look at that. This is Hijikata's letter? Is it anything special? Ah, okay, here we go. We have one little thing left. Hijikata's letter. Dear Chizuru, I've written lots of letters, but this is my first time writing to you. Perhaps I'll be able to write down the things I can't say. The purpose of this letter is to tell you of my feelings for you. I remember when we first met. I imagine you were scared to suddenly find yourself looking down the business end of a sword. I remember thinking you must have had pretty bad luck to get caught in that situation. Never thought you were Kodo's daughter, though. Looking back at it now, I think it must have been fate playing with us. We took you back to the compound, but I wasn't able to let you out much. Didn't have much choice, but I'm sorry for doing that to you. You couldn't stand feeling like a freeloader, though, so you found things to do, even if they were just menial busy work. You were so convinced you were a burden that you wouldn't take no for an answer once you started asking for something to do. Eventually, that fighting spirit of yours got out onto the battlefield. You're quite a woman. But more than all that, it was your sense of responsibility that made me feel that I could trust you at my side. Unfortunately, bringing you with me has put you through a lot more than your fair share of hardships. We didn't mind. We were quite happy to go along with you. Even so, you never complained. You even helped lift my spirits. It wasn't long before I came to depend on your strength. To be honest, it's probably why I fell for you. Whenever things got bad, it was your words that brought me up out of despair. The only reason the weight on my shoulders hasn't crushed me was that you were there, Chizuru, to hold me up. When I've got you by my side, I feel at peace. I hope you understand why I didn't want to take you to Azo. You're more important to me than anyone else, and I didn't want to make you suffer anymore. After I left, no matter what I did, all I could think about was you. I tried to tell myself that as long as you were happy and safe, I was all right, but it felt as if there was a hole in my heart. When we were finally reunited, for a moment I thought it was only a dream. Now I know, no matter how much I tried to deny it, that you are irreplaceable. I'll never let you go again. See, as long as you're by my side, I feel like there's some sort of meaning to my life. There was always meaning to your life. Now that the war is over and we have peace, I'm not quite sure what to do with myself. Just love me. Love me. But that means our options are wide open. If there's anything you want to do, then just say so, and I'll make it happen. Whatever it takes. Let's have babies together. We have our whole lives ahead of us, and I want yours to be wonderful. It probably sounds strange for me to come out and say it like this, but here it is. I love you, Chizuru. As soon as you're done reading this letter, destroy it. <laughs> It contains ex <laughs> it contains extremely sensitive information. Thank you. No, I want to keep it forever. <laughs> How dare you tell me to burn a letter that you wrote to me? That's horrible. <laughs> but it's so totally like him to say that. <laughs> Wouldn't want anybody finding his love letter. All right. Well, that's it for Hijikata. And yeah, I'm going to be starting Hara the next episode. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? Bye bye everybody. <laughs>